Well, I haven't actually cleaned my windshield yet, but I did clean off my dashboard for those of you who have been bothered. And also, just for y'all that have a hard time with my truck being so dirty, just a sec. I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean it out. Here we go. Clean. So easy. I should do that more often. In like Flynn, aren't we, girl? Going to feed some calves? Does that make you happy? He's counting. He's counting the rows. The little glove on the end of the spray boom is still holding on from when he used that. That was really ingenious. So he can see, phone marker, so he can see where he's been. Well, he's making it. I expected to see like rows of corn not down. It just amazes me. I mean, it looks like he's 
It looks like they should be, but they're not. So maybe he does know what he's doing. <laughs> Chuckle. He does. He knows a lot more than I do. All right. This will be it. Last spray. Get control of this grass coming up. And yet we're due more rain, potentially a lot more rain today and tomorrow. So far so good, the river has not gotten out. We really were worried about that because it rained a lot to the west of us, north and west. West and north? West anyway. All right, that's that. It's about to rain. A few drops on my windshield. And groceries to get in. So I'm gonna try to beat it. And I gotta go get meat for supper out of the freezer. I forgot about that. Doing ribs tonight, y'all. Have I showed you how I make ribs? Super easy. Maybe I will. It's a beautiful sight, isn't it? My girl has requested ribs. I already told y'all that. So, there we go. They were right there waiting for me. Um, I really should take more meat in so I don't have to come back. But I never know when I want to cook. I don't have a lot of freezer room inside. So, I'll probably be back tomorrow. <laughs> have I told y'all about my hummingbirds? Yeah. I don't remember, so I'm going to tell you again. So, for the last several years, I haven't really been feeding them because I would put it out and it would go bad and they weren't around. But this year, they started showing up, you know, like asking for it. So I put some out and then they started multiplying. You see, it's like a war, it's like a Hummer war. Uh, and there's like dog wars too, but Hummer wars, that's what I'm talking about. So, hey y'all. There's, there's I think. Um, so anyway, I filled that big one up and then I found the small one and now they're going through it in like a day. And this is why I don't do good with hummingbirds because it requires so much work. It's really not that much work, but it's like something I have to remember to do, something else. But they're really fun to watch and listen to. So <sighs> I'm going to try to keep them fed. And this is my reminder to myself to take the feeder down right now and go fill it up. What is happening here? Clara. Bonnie. Bonnie doesn't seem to be appreciating that. Okay. But tails are wagging. Tails are wagging. I know. I'm just an old girl. I don't always want to play. Done. Go, go. Gadget arm. Okay. All right, y'all can come back now. Yeah, that was... I think they're happy. Just call me the Hummer Whisperer. I'm just kidding, that's silly. But they're everywhere. They're so happy. Well, since this is turning out to be another hodgepodge vlog, by yours truly. I was getting ready to do something that I do often and I thought maybe I would share it with you because perhaps somebody out there will appreciate this and possibly be able to incorporate it into your own life. We'll call this Murdy's Kitchen Hacks. I don't know. Southern Kitchen Hacks. Southern, Southern Trick. Kitchen Trick. I don't know. You can call it whatever you want. But around here, sweet tea is consumed at what some would probably consider alarming rates. It is what it is. We drink milk, we drink water, and we drink sweet tea. Uh, I don't know. A gallon? At least every two days, if not every day in the summer. I make my tea with real sugar. It's the only sugar, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> and 
What I have found is that because it goes so fast, I got tired of having to turn around and make it all the time. So that's when I started doing this. Hold on. Then once it starts boiling, I put my tea bags in. I just recorded this and it didn't work, so now I'm having to backtrack. Anywho, I put my tea bags in, I punch them down a little bit and try not to burn my fingers. Turn the gas off, pretend like it was still on. Okay, it's off now. I put the lid on and I let it steep. I do not time this. I know some people do. I will let it sit for several hours. It doesn't bother the tea, it doesn't bother us. Basically, when I remember to come back in here and finish making it is when I take it off the stove. And then what I do is I take my little sugar jar that I keep a third of a cup scoop in at all times. And I put one cup of sugar in a pint jar, not pint, what is this? Quart, it's a quart. Math is hard for me. So I put a cup of sugar in a quart jar and I will split that tea between two jars with a cup of sugar in each jar and then fill the rest of the jar up with water, shake it up and put it in the fridge. So in essence, I'm making tea starter. I'm making two gallons of tea in advance. And then when we're ready for another gallon of tea, I pour the starter into the gallon jug and finish filling it up with water. And it's already got the sugar in there. It's already dissolved and it's ready to go. And it has been a game changer for me. Some days when I really want to stock up, I'll do like two batches. So I'll have four starters. I'll have four gallons at a time sitting, well, starter gallons in the refrigerator ready to go. So I don't know if that helps anybody else out there, but it's been, like I say, it's been a life changer around here for us. And I'm just all about passing along the tricks. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> So, if I can help somebody else, this one's for you. Mm. Always, always messing up. Wide mouth jars are easier, typically less messy. They're ready to go. I will also make a confession that I cannot even count the number of times I have burned water out of the pot that I was, I was boiling to make tea because I leave the room. I turn it on, I leave the room and my mom brain takes over, so I call it, even though my youngest child is eight, I still say that I have mom brain, and I forget about it. And that's probably why that pot looks the way it does, because it's been burned numerous times. So, there's another trick. You can't cook away from the stove. My husband says that all the time to me, and it's kind of true, even though I don't really consider tea cooking, I guess it is, if the gas is on and the water burns out and it has the potential to burn down the house. Yeah. Okay, back to ribs. Oh, and right there from my last vlog, the butter sitting out is going amazing. It's, it's great. It's a great thing. If you didn't see that, you need to go back and watch it. I mean, I'm just saying. That would be nice if you did. So, anyway beef short ribs. Normally, I would just put these right into the crock pot, frozen, but because I did not get my rear in gear this morning, and it's 2.18 p.m., I went ahead and thawed them out in the microwave for a little bit. So, I'm going to take them out of their package, put them in here, put them on high until they're done, and then I'll show you what I do. Another thing that I use an awful lot of is beef base, beef broth base and seasoning. This is something I find at my local Piggly Wiggly. 
I'm sure they have different brands across the country. This works good. Two teaspoons per cup of broth. Do y'all think I measure it? Mm -mm. I don't measure it. But I do typically use a measuring cup because it's easy to pour out of. And I'll put like around a cup of water. I'll take a spoon and I'll just take some and mix it up. And I'll pour this in there with the ribs. Ribs make amazing broth. They make their own amazing broth. So this just gives it a little extra kick, a little extra flavor. And then you should never throw away juice from cooking ribs. You should put it in your refrigerator and you should use it to season vegetables. Makes excellent soup stock. It's good, y'all. If you're not doing that, you're you're really not living. So I'm just just saying. All right. So I'll just pour this in there with them. I missed a few pieces. Am I gonna let that bother me that that did not get all dissolved? No, I'm not. I don't let things like that bother me. And I'm gonna put a little salt. I like using kosher salt. Not necessarily coarse, but it's all they have. And that's all I'm doing. We're gonna let her cook. Taters on, mashed potatoes. Because you can't have ribs without mashed potatoes. Well, you can't hear anyway. Okay, y'all. They're done. The ribs are done. They're fall off the barn. They're falling off the barn. Actually, no, they're not falling off the barn, but they're falling off the bone. Done. Good. Now what I do is I take them out of here. I put them, I put them in a skillet because I have a love affair with my skillets. You could use a glass baking dish, any kind of, any kind of dish that can go in the oven. And then I put barbecue sauce on them. This is just what I do, y'all. So take it or leave it, but my family loves it and it really is one of my favorite dishes. Excuse me. We're at the end of this bottle. <laughs> this is some local homemade stuff. I got more. I need to fill it back up. And then I'll put it in the oven and I'll broil it for a few minutes just to get it bubbling. And that's it. That's all there is to it. So good though. Trust me. Try it sometime. Try it and let me know what you think. Okay, I'm now cooking supper and remembered that I need to finish making my tea starter. This is what I'm talking about. It's been sitting here for, I don't know how many hours, several. It's all good though. Okay, can I do this without spilling it and holding the camera? We're gonna try really hard. I'm gonna try to do better than I did in the last video with my coffee when I attempted this. Of course, that was before I'd had any coffee. I have, I need coffee before I have coffee. It's weird. Anyway, so that's what I do. And then I'll finish filling these up with water. And put a lid on it. I can't talk tonight, so that's that. Put a lid on it. Put the lid on tight with two hands, okay? And then I shake it. It's very scientific, y'all. I shake it to get the sugar shook up. Uh, dissolved is a better word. And I've got two gallons of tea. Oh, I forgot to fill this one up with water. Downtime. What can we talk about? Okay. That didn't take long. And I'll shake it up. Shake your tea. I don't know. It's a thing. It's a thing here. And I'll put these in the refrigerator. And we have tea starter. I forgot to take a picture of the ribs in the pan, but they turned out pretty good. As did the mashed potatoes and the broccoli and cheese.